Normally when it comes to interactions, I only ever cover the voice lines of new champions. And I skip over what comes from Legends of Runeterra. That's because unlike in League, where the interactions are only based on what if the two champions met on the Summoner's Rift, Legends of Runeterra has double if. Because Legends of Runeterra is happening in the canonical world of Runeterra, these interactions would be canon if there was a canonical place where the two champions could meet, and then under those circumstances, the voice lines are based on if they even met. So basically, compared to League, you have to take Legends of Runeterra with an extra pinch of salt. With that said, Today I'm doing an exception. I will be covering the newest interactions that are coming from the newest cards in Legends of Runeterra, because there is some really spicy info. So without further ado, let's all hail Skin Spotlight and let's have a look at it. The Rock Mover, the Mini Mage, the Surf. <laughs> Malphite, you can just call me Talia. See, this is exactly what I meant when I was talking about an extra pinch of salt. These interactions would make sense if Malphite was on Targon, if Talia already knew him, which means that they had to meet somewhere in Shurima, and then if the two met again. That's why there are so many levels of what would happen if. The girl always beats me. I must learn her powers. When I first heard this voice line, it caught me off guard. You see, Malphite comes from Ishtau, which is a region that specializes in elemental magic. That's why I was curious, why would Malphite want to know Talia's powers? His elemental magic should be greater than hers. Perhaps you should choose scissors, Malphite. But then I learned that it was just a joke about rock, scissors, paper. Snow on my feet, wind on my head. Oh, I hope you never change. Now, we already covered the story of Chip. But I have to say, the voice actor did a stellar job. I don't know who she is, but the voice of Chip is incredible. I was thinking the same thing, Blue. Of course, here he is referencing the fact that the Blue Sentinel doesn't speak. That was also pointed out by Chip. You know, I was hit by a star once. Sometimes the sky waves and my back tingles. And these are the first lines where we actually have to pause. I talked about these in the video where we talked about Chip. So once again, here's my explanation as to what this means. You see, Malphite is from Ishtal. I know that a lot of people are confused right now, but Malphite is not a Targonian giant. And therefore, these voice lines shouldn't make sense. Why should Malphite feel the stars moving when he's not even Targonian? Well, actually, there is a Gigabrain connection. You see, it was because of Targonians that the Sun Disks were constructed in Shurima. These Sun Disks, using the Celestial Powers, then made the Ascended. One of these Ascended, called Nezuk, was an Ishtali mage who constructed a floating fortress called the Monolith, and Malphite is a shard of that floating fortress. Therefore, you could argue that Malphite was constructed by someone who was using Celestial Powers. That's how Malphite could be connected to Targon, and that's why he would be attuned to the stars. Other than this crazy explanation, we have no idea why should Malphite even care about the stars. Sharima's legacy will endure. We Ionians always remember those who came before us. Um, that's not true. I am pretty sure the point of Master Yi's story was that people forgot about the very first encounter the mortal race ever had. That was the war between the very first Vastaya Shirei and the Stone Giants. So no, Irelia, your people forgot what came before them. My heart races. W what if I falter? If you fall, I will always catch you. Our enemies approach. M my hands are shaking. Then hold on to mine. We'll face them together. And this is the first spicy thing. Yes, it seems like these two are into each other. And while here these interactions don't necessarily confirm it, you know this may be just Irelia caring about her fellow warriors. You'll see later that it gets pushed beyond that. Mine is the hand of Noxus. A good reason to cut it free. Of course, that's a reference to Irelia fighting Swain during the battle for the Placidium. The enemy approaches the painted shores. Play the song of the fallen, so they might witness our fight. The enemy has reached the soaring hills. Let them come. Our blades will greet them. 
Here I want to mention that nor the painted shores, nor the soaring hills are a place you can find on the map. But because we know that the Noxian invasion arrived in the south of the main continent, that's likely where these are. Two worlds, one balance. How can the balance allow this slaughter? Of course, while Shen is all about equilibrium, which means that he is slaying both good and evil people, as well as good and evil spirits, and especially if the spirits and the humans attack each other, Irelia doesn't care, and she's one of the people who took the defense of Ionia into her own hands. Blessings of water and shade to you. In times like these, I'll take all the help we can get. Here we can quickly mention that water and shade to you is a phrase which the Shurimans say almost as a greetings. You can hear this phrase a lot in the story of Rumble. Spade or scythe, shovel or spear, we will fight. Your courage runs deep as the willow's roots. Now because here she said the willow, I wonder if she's referencing the god willow, which was a legendary tree in Ionia, which Ivern the Cruel cut down, and that's how he was turned into nature's spirit. By my hand will Noxus rise. And by our blades will it fall. And once again, these two have history of cutting hands. Join us, Prince Jarvan. Dance by our side. <laughs> I'm afraid I was born with two left feet. It's a light shield thing. I love this interaction, because at least we learned that the light shield dynasty is pretty bad at dancing. My family. Have you seen them? Drifting between innocence and consequence. This is a cool reference. Because Irelia's parents were killed by the Noxians in the Placidium. And while they were innocent, they were killed because they struggled against the enemy. That's where the consequences come in. Oh Ma, wherever you are, look away. You attack us with our own land? Of course, Oma is an Ionian word for mother, but also you can see that these catapults are using the heads of the stone giants for the ammunition. So not only are they using Ionian land against its own people, what's worse, they are using the only proof of the first ever war on Runeterra as a weapon in a new war. We'll dance again. Not you. I'll always catch you. And these are the lines that make it a little bit more obvious. I am pretty sure these two are into each other. That's a new one. And so, here I wanna point out a cool fact about Ionian marriage. You see, Ionians don't really care about what gender you are. A marriage in Ionia is the bond of two souls. And it really doesn't matter what physical body the soul has. That's why, believe it or not, Irelia is being confirmed here. And at the same time, this gives more context to Valmar and Kai. You have seen the future. How can one avert their fate? I still haven't found a way to stop Acathia's demise. Only I can save my home. Our power is both a gift and a burden. Above all else, we must be patient. This is our duty, to wait and watch. Now, the interactions of Zillion and Lysandra are really awesome. Because if you listen to all of them, you may realize that the two appreciate each other. And that's because they are both doing the exact same thing. They are trying to stop the Void. Lysandra is doing it with the Watchers in the north, and Zillion is trying to figure out how to remove it from Ikathia. They are both safeguarding Runeterra. And that's what all of these interactions are about. If I had your power, I would not squander it so. I know fully well what you do, given the chance. Now, of course, with the first one, it is a little bit special. Because Zillion points out he knows what Lysandra would do if she had the power to reverse time. Now, of course, what we all think is that Lysandra would never made a deal with the Watchers. And so the Watchers would not have a gateway into our world. But seeing how angry Zillion is, it means that there is a twist to this. So, most likely, if Lysandra had the ability to see the future, she would still make a deal with the Watchers, but she would trick them in a way so that she would have their powers, without endangering Runeterra with their presence. That would be a really cool alternative timeline. And maybe that's what the Black Frost skins are about. Maybe they are referencing a universe where Lysandra wields the power of the Watchers. 
Also, I would like to point out that yes, officially it should be pronounced Ikathia. But at this point I've been saying it for so long, there is no way I am rewiring my brain. I see you picked up a little more than knowledge. Facing certain doom, I had to be resourceful. I like how this is referencing exactly what happened to Kaisa. She also fought the Void and she ended up using the Void against itself. You have an important job to do. Have you collected anything useful? And then there is just a bunch of lines that talk about exactly what we were talking about when we talked about Zillion. He knew Ikathia would be consumed by the Void, and so he set up his clocklings to wait for the Cataclysm to pass, and then they would gather specimens, which the researchers would then research. Oh, my favorite, an old Akathian design. I love how this reveals that the preservationist is actually a construct from old Ikathia. It wasn't something Zillion made. Which would also mean that most of the other clocklings were not made by Zillion himself. Or if they were, they were still using magic and machinery which came from Ikathia. That makes sense because Ikathia was a kingdom of mages. Talia! Talia! Chip, you are the noisiest little rock. Once again, I really wish this would be 100% canon. But since Chip is on Targon, it is very unlikely for him and Talia to meet. Unless Riot decides to give Chip a new story, just like what they did with Von Yip. Anyway, still, Chip's voice is awesome. King Jarvan, I am ready to serve. Lead the assault, Warmaster. Save my son. And then we get to Cythria. I am still not sure whether I want to make a new video especially for the new Cythria. Because this card legitimately breaks the timeline. You see, the card says that Cythria was sent to save Prince Jarvan and she was sent by Jarvan III. However, by the time Cythria was recruited into the Demacian military, the king was already dead, so he could have never even mentioned Cythria. That's why the quote doesn't make sense. And even if we live in this what-if scenario, there isn't an if big enough for this to make sense. So when we have a look at this voice line specifically, for example, Yes, in the scenario of what if Cythria met King Jarvan III, this could be what she would say. But because the king's death is a pretty big plot point in what is happening in Cythria's story, canonically this would never be what she would say. If she met Jarvan III, she would say something like, My king, you are alive! Or, how is this possible? No, instead, not only is she just casually talking to the dead king, but the king is also sending her to save his son, which happened when she was like 12 years old. That's why Cythria kinda breaks everything. So if you are confused, don't worry, that's absolutely normal. This isn't really how this should play out. I'm actually here. <laughs> Seems a lifetime ago. I mean, interactions like these ones are cool, because they actually mention the what if Cythria could time travel. And the reason why this voice line works is because this is what Cythria would canonically say if she met herself from years ago. When it comes to the king, however, that doesn't make sense. Cythria, you're a sight for sore eyes. We came as fast as we could, Prince Jarvan. Are you hurt? Once again, this would never happen. However, given how many times Jarvan was captured in the past, sure, in a certain scenario, why not? Poor Master Cythria. You received my message. I did, Your Grace. We're ready to fight. With Demacia in our hearts, we fly! Cythria, victory is assured. Ah, <sighs> see, here the king talks to Cythria directly. He even calls out her name. So he is acting as if the two had known each other for years. But in reality, the two have never met in their lives. So this could never be a canonical response. How will my people remember me? Perhaps we will know soon enough, Jarvan. And this card pretty much confirms that yes, it was the Black Rose that killed King Jarvan. I mean, it wasn't confirmed in a canon story yet, but all the voice lines this card has are mentioning the fact that the Black Rose was hunting down the king. And remember, during Silas's rebellion, the king died, but he wasn't killed by Silas or his mages. 
so there was a third party in play. That's why the king being taken down by the Black Rose makes sense. Guards, arrest this trespasser. It is not the enemies from afar you need fear, king. And it also points out that the members of the Black Rose are in the noble houses of Demacia. So the king was killed from within. Ionians, into formation! I'd follow you to the black heart of Noxus itself. You were always the Elder's favorite student. And you were mine. And this is the interaction that just nails it. It couldn't be more clear. Yep, they are into each other. You created life on these lands. No, little fish. I created you. You brought death to these lands. No, little wing. I brought you. And yeah, I hate to say it, but this kind of confirms that the Mask Mother did kind of create death. I still want to make a new video on this. But what we learn from these is that it seems like the Mask Mother made the concept of the gods. So, for example, she crafted the masks. But people then started believing in the concept behind the masks. And that's what really gave death a form. It was the Mask Mother that ignited the concept and the people then believing in it. Again, I will most likely make a video about this. And of course, specifically when it comes to these cards, the fish and the bird are life and death. These are the gods which the Kinko ninjas believe in. And lastly, when it comes to the Chirians, because they have their own voice lines and their own language, this might confirm that they are different from all the Wompers. These are a unique race. But that's it for the interactions of these new cards. Even though they were all over the place, we still got some really interesting new cool info. Especially when it comes to Irelia, but also death. Which, you know, I have never made a video on death in the past. So now I definitely have to make a video summarizing how death works on Runeterra. <laughs> 